In today's tutorial, you're going to learn how to create this blurred icon effect with Photoshop. So we're going to create this blur effect and also have the ability to move this cloud to any position you want and, and still have that blurred effect. So this is a really cool trick that you can use with Photoshop on any type of icon design. So watch until the end of the video to learn all of the steps from start to finish and you'll have an image that will look just like this and you can apply the same trick to all the other icons that you design. So if you like these types of videos make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't already. If you have any questions or any other video requests just comment down below and I'll consider making a video. So let's get started with today's video. So we're going to start by drawing in a square document. So to do that, let's click on create new and let's give it a width of 1500 pixels by 1500 and leave it on uh, 72 pixels per inch and the color mode should be on RGB 8-bit and leave the background content as white and you don't need to change anything on the advanced options uh, section. Just leave that as it is and click on create. So here's our document. So if you don't see this layers panel and the properties panel, you can go up to windows and click on layers and then also go up to windows again and click on properties and you should be able to see these uh, two panels right here. So let's start by drawing in the sun first. So I'm going to click on uh, the new layer icon right here. So that's my new layer and I'm going to double click on it to rename it and I'm just going to rename it sun. Then let's go to the uh, shape tool right here and I'm going to choose the ellipse tool. So if you click and hold, you'll see the ellipse tool right here. So when you draw in the shape, make sure you hold shift, then you can draw a perfect circle. Uh, if you don't hold shift, you'll just draw an oval. So let's just draw in a circle like this. And then let's also change the color by going up to fill right here. And I'm going to click on this little uh, colored uh, gradient color right here. And let's just give it a bright yellow color. So just about there and click on OK. So that's good. Then I'll just move this just about there. So it just snaps to like the uh, top corner or the top quarter of the document. So just around there is uh, fine. You don't need to be perfectly accurate. So next let's create another layer and I'm going to call this sun shade. So this is just going to be some of the shading around the sun. Sun shading. I'll just call it that. And I'll go to the uh, paintbrush tool and I'm going to choose a paintbrush. So let's resize this brush. So now you can see the circle size of the brush. I can resize it and you can make it bigger. So I'm going to make it quite a bit bigger. So it's, that's about 4,200. I'll make it slightly small actually. Yeah, so that's just about there. That's about 1,800 pixels. And I'm also going to decrease the hardness of the brush to 0%. So then the shade around this sun should be like a kind of a orange color. So I'm going to choose maybe a color just about there. And you'll notice if I just click on the screen, it just makes the color go everywhere. So I don't really want that. So I'm going to undo that by pressing control Z or command Z if you're on a Mac. So to only shade in the circle, we're going to press and hold control and click on the sun layer right here. So now we have this selection. So if you, when you press and hold control or command if you're on a Mac and click on the layers, the square layer right here, it just selects everything within that layer. So you can see that dashed line. So now when I click here, you can only see it only fills inside the selection. So now you have this nice looking shade kind of going around the sun. And now we can pick kind of like a darker orange color as well to go around the edges. So maybe something slightly a bit more red. And let's also fill that part in as well. And let's also maybe go into kind of the reddish area as well. So some, something like that. And let's also fill that in. So I think that looks good there. And once you're happy with that, you can press Control D to unselect everything or Command D if you're on a Mac. And let's say that the shade is a bit too dark. You can go into the sh uh, sun shading layer and just slightly um, lower the opacity if you wanted to. So just exactly the right kind of type of colors that you want. So I'm happy with that. Now we're ready to start drawing in the cloud. So before we actually start drawing in the cloud, I actually wanted to group the two layers that we created so far together. So that's the two sun layer. 
So we do that so it doesn't affect the sun layer at all, it just stays as it is. So we're going to do that by clicking on this top layer which is sun shading, press and hold shift and then click on the bottom layer and you'll notice it clicks, it selects both of the layers together. Then when you press Ctrl G or Command G if you're on a Mac, it will create a group. So now under that group is the two layers and we can collapse that group just like this. So this is just a nice way to keep everything organized. So I'm just going to rename this group to Sun. There we go. Then I'll create another layer and I'll also put this under a group as well. So we've got layer one right here and I'll just press Ctrl G or Command G if you're on a Mac to again group that and I'll just call this cloud. So now with this cloud, I'm going to choose this layer that we just created and I'm just going to choose uh, just a slight kind of a darkish, just a kind of a light, a light gray color. So I'm happy with that there. Then uh, I'm going to go into the shape tool, press and hold and choose the ellipse tool again. And I'm just going to draw in a small circle just about this big. So that's good. Then I'll uh, click on another layer and I'll draw in another circle. So now I'll just move that just right there and I'm also going to press Ctrl T or Command T if you're on a Mac and I'm just going to make sure it aligns with the bottom of this circle right here. So that looks good. And then I'll just draw in one more circle, maybe slightly smaller. So I'm going to create another layer and I'll just draw in a circle about that big. So I'm happy with that. And let's move that in just to the bottom. So that just snapped to the um, align to the bottom right there as well. So ne next time I'm, I'm going to group all of them together. Just make it kind of look like a cloud. And we're also going to create um, a rectangle right here. So it just hides all of these bottom parts right here. So let's do that by creating another new layer. Press and hold control. Go to the rectangular tool. And I'm just going to draw in a rectangle going from right from here to there. And we can also always resize it so it aligns to the bottom and also maybe snaps to the center of this circle and snaps to the center of this circle. So then hit enter. Now we have this nice looking cloud. So let's group all of these together now. So I don't want this to be, you know, uh, four separate layers with one circle here with another circle here. So I'm going to do that by pressing and holding um, uh, uh, I mean, choose the top layer, which is rectangle one, press and hold shift and choose the bottom layer, which is ellipse tool. And I'm going to regroup this again. So I'm going to go to control G and you can see there's another group under the cloud group. So I'm just going to call this backup. So the reason why I call it backup is let's say we make a mistake. We can always go back to this backup. So we can still see the layers are all still in there. So we can always use this as a backup. So now I'm going to create another copy of backup and there's backup copy and I'll name this one main cloud. And then for this one, I'm just going to press and hold, um, click on the top layer, which is rectangle one, scroll down to the bottom to ellipse one. So that's all under main clouds group. And then I'm going to press control E. So not control G, control E. So that just puts it all under one layer instead of one group. So now all of this is just one group. So now we can hide the cloud behind it by clicking on this little eye icon and that just hides it. So this just makes it so much easier to just move this cloud around exactly where we want and we can move it to the center just about there. So I'm happy with that. And also if you just want to get a selection of this cloud, all we need to do is press and hold control and command if you're on a Mac and click on rectangle one right here. And it just we just get that exact selection that we're looking for. So now we've got the cloud and we've got the sun. Now it's time to start creating the blurred effect. So to create this blurred effect, we're going to start by hiding the cloud first. So let's hide this cloud by clicking on this little eye icon. And let's also collapse this uh, group right here. So it all looks nice and organized. So let's create another copy of the sun group layer right here. So we're going to do that by clicking and dragging it into the new layer icon. And we're going to uh, open up this new sun copy layer. And I'm going to rename this to sun blurred. And we've got these two layers right here. So we want to merge both of these layers together. So that's sun shading and sun. So let's click on sun shading, press and hold shift and click on sun. 
then press Control E or Command E if you're on a Mac and let's merge them together. So let's also rename it again from Sun Shading to Sun Blurred. So now we can start blurring the sun. So this is what it should look like when the cloud moves over the sun. So we're going to choose the sun blurred layer, go up to filter, go down to blur, then Gaussian blur. So that's filter, blur, then Gaussian blur. So if you have this preview ticked on, you should be able to see a blurred edge around the sun. And the more you move this line to the right, the more blurry it gets. The more you move it to the left, the less blurry it gets. So I'm going to move it somewhere in the middle, so just around 30, and click on OK. And if you want to see what this uh, blurred effect looks like, you can hide the sun layer, and this is what it looks like. So when we move the cloud over the sun, this is the blurry effect that we're going to get. So that looks uh, good. So I'm, just, I'm actually going to keep the sun layer hidden for now, and we're just going to uh, get, get this blurred effect finished first. So inside the sun blurred group, I'm going to create another layer. And I'm going to move this layer below the sun blurred layer. And I'm going to call this background. So background, there we go. And I'm going to give this background color a, a light grayish color. So this should be the gray color of the cloud that you want. So just somewhere around there. Click on OK. Then choose the paint bucket tool. And we're going to paint that in. Uh, gray. So it looks weird right now, but it will all make sense later on. So now we're ready to bring back the cloud. So we're going to collapse the sun blurred layer right here and then reveal the cloud layer by clicking on the eye icon right here. So there's the cloud. And if I open up the cloud layer, you should have this main cloud group inside the cloud layer as well. And that should have the rectangle with all of the the shapes and circles making up the shape of the cloud. So if you press and hold control or command if you're on a Mac and then click inside the box of that of that uh, layer which with all the shapes in it, you can get the outline selected of the cloud. So you should see this dashed outline which is the cloud. So then I will uh, hide the cloud group and then all we're left with is just the selection of the cloud. So then we can go to the sun blurred layer right here. So let's go back to that and we're going to hide everything except for the selection. So we do that by clicking on the masking box. So the masking box simply keeps everything that's selected and hides everything that's not selected. And you'll also notice a new box right here. So that's the masking box. And if I press and hold Alt or Option key if you're on a Mac and click on that masking box, you'll see this. So anything that's white here is revealed and anything that's black is hidden. And if I press and hold Alt again or Option key, click back on that masking box, it will go back to normal. So now if I bring back the sun layer, so that's the sun group layer, if I bring it back, you'll get the exact effect that we're looking for. But there is one problem. Let's say I go back to the sun blurred layer right here and I click and drag the cloud. You can see the cloud is moving the sun with it. So it's not the effect that I'm looking for. So what I'm going to do is undo that. And what's happening here is there's this little clipped icon. So let me just collapse all of this again. So there's this little clipped icon. And what it's telling Photoshop to do is it's saying keep the image inside of this cutout and the cutout itself together. So it's both clipped together. But what I want is to be able to move the cutout, which is the cloud shaped cutout around without moving the shapes or the image inside of the cutout. So all you do that do for that is just simply click off this little clip icon. So now we're just, just left with this cutout, but it's not really attached to the image. So if I choose the masking box right here, and I choose the move tool and I move it, now you can see it gets the exact effect that you're looking for. So that's a really nice, cool, blurry effect. And we can move the cloud here. But what we're really doing is just moving the cutout and revealing the image right here. But it just gives it that effect of it blurring the sun. So that's how you create this blurred effect with Photoshop.
but there's a little bit more things that you can do just some final touches to make this a bit more realistic so when I move it over you can see the Sun kind of looks like it's smaller so that's not what I want so I'm gonna make the Sun a bit bigger in the blurred effect right here so go to the Sun blurred layer under the Sun blurred group and we're gonna press and press and hold um, press control T or command T and we're gonna make it slightly bigger so press and hold alt or option key if you're in a Mac and it will just make it bigger from the center and you can see we can just resize it just to the right amount so I think that looks good there and hit enter and let's also give this cloud a drop shadow so we can go to the Sun um, blurred uh, group and click on the masking box go up to layer and go down to layer style and then click on drop shadow so you can see there's a nice little drop shadow right there and I'm gonna make the distance slightly low make it spread out just a little bit and increase the size a little bit as well and I'm also going to decrease the opacity just slightly as well so there we go so that looks good and also let's say you want to change the the color of the cloud so you can do that by going into the background and instead of having a layer like this I'm, I can uh, create a new layer called solid layer so this is a little icon next to the masking box it's like a little half circle so if I click on that uh, and go up to solid color uh, I can create a layer um, with just any color I want so maybe it could be like a light gray color like this so I think that looks pretty cool so I'm gonna click on OK there and I can um, just change it to any random color whenever I want to so let's say this is the color fill right here so all I need to do is just double click on it and maybe I want like a red red cloud or a blue cloud I can also do like a dark gray cloud any any type of color that you want so I'm gonna make a slightly darker just about there is good and click on OK so now if I want to move the cloud around again just go to the cutout of the Sun blurred group choose the move tool and you can move it anywhere that you want so you want to move it just somewhere around there just to give it that uh, effect that you're looking for so you can do all types of things with this you can create like a glass blurred effect uh, here's some examples that I found on pinterest.com so here's some uh, effects that you can do there's a camera icon right here there's the effect that we just did right now um, here's like a speech bubble one a folded one uh, and there's plenty of other examples that you can uh, use with this effect so uh, go out and try this effect and if you have any questions just comment down below and I hope you found this tutorial helpful if you have any um, uh, other video requests you can comment down below as well if you uh, haven't liked this video make sure you do and also subscribe and hit the notification bell and I'll see you in next week's video